In this video, we're revisiting the Radiolink RC8X transmitter. It's been a couple months since I first got this transmitter, and I'm going to give you my thoughts now that I've had it for a while. I'll also show you how to update the firmware. We'll explore some of the new features available with this firmware upgrade, and I'll also demo some of my favorite features that I've come across with this thing. For this video, I'm not going to do a recap of the transmitter itself. If you want to know more about the RC8X, I encourage you to take a look at my initial review on this transmitter, which I will link down below. So let's jump in and check it out. First up, let's jump into the firmware upgrade because some of the features that I'm going to talk about are dependent on the upgrade. So it's pretty easy to upgrade the firmware on this thing. You can do it in two different ways. There's the micro SD card that comes with it, and there's the Type-C USB cable that you plug into your computer and upgrade it that way. I chose to do the latter because I don't have a micro SD slot on my computer. So how I did mine was go to the Radiolink website, navigate to the RC8X page, and they have the newest firmware available right on their website to download. It's a zip file, so you're going to download the zip file. And before you extract it, you're going to want to plug your RC8X into your computer. So right on the side here, we've got all our auxiliary ports and things like this. There's this little rubber flap. You're going to open that up, and that's your plug for your Type-C cable. So you're going to plug it into that and then plug it into your laptop or your desktop computer. Then we're going to power this on. When you do this, you're going to hold the DT2 and DT1 switches right on top of the steering knob here and then turn it on. And you'll get into kind of this system menu, if you will. And then you can scroll through using the dial on the top right hand side of the transmitter. Scroll through your modes there. You're going to go into USB mode. When you go into the USB mode, it's going to initiate the files on your computer. You should see them pop up in your file explorer. And now you're going to want to go back into your zip file that you downloaded from Radiolink and you're going to want to extract those files. Once you've got them extracted, you're going to grab those files and you're going to copy them into the Radiolink EXT file. Once you've done that, you can then go back into your Radiolink mode. You do, you can go back through the screens by pressing the dial here. Gets you back to the menu. You're going to go to update the latest and use the power button to select. And it should show the newest version of the firmware available. It will ask you, do you want to confirm the upgrade? Hit OK with the power button and it should install the firmware upgrades very quick. doesn't take any time at all. When you're done, you want to go back to kind of your menu here and you want to scroll down to the power off. You're going to turn it off. When you boot the radio link back up, you can go into your settings menu and verify that you're on the latest firmware. It will show you what version you're on on the transmitter itself. So with the new firmware upgrade, we get a couple of different enhancements. We get some improved theme settings, but more importantly, we get the ability to change our servo speed. We can now achieve three millisecond latency speed with this thing. You do have to make sure that you've upgraded your receivers to the right version. The R8FG, the eight channel receiver is now available in the 2.1 version. Along with the firmware upgrade that we did recently, I changed over the Gladiator to the new R8FG 2.1 so that I could test the latency response. There's now three options. There's a 14 millisecond, which is recommended for analog servos. There's a four millisecond and a three millisecond option for digital servos. Speaking of receivers, binding the new receivers on this is super easy. On the side of the case here, in between the two antennas, there's a little bind button in there. Simply take a paper clip or a small driver, press that button, then switch on your power and you'll see it start to blink rapidly. Keep your transmitter near and the things will sync up really easy. Super, super easy to bind. For the micro receivers, these I find have been fantastic and I'm slowly converting a lot of my builds over to that. I really like these micro receivers and I really just enjoy this transmitter. So I'm slowly converting things over. Most recently I converted over Snaggletooth the deadbolt. So I'm working my way through my inventory and converting things over. Now I still have a lot to learn about the RC8X and I am barely scratching the surface of the capabilities of this thing, but I've really found some features that I enjoy and have found real world practicality with our rock crawlers. So I'm gonna hit the trail now and I'm gonna demonstrate some of the key features that I've found that I use most frequently and find the most beneficial. So let's check it out. All right, getting ready to hit the trails with my little man over here. He's thrilled as you can see. <laughs> So real quick, just want to demonstrate some of the features that I've found out on the Radiolink transmitter. So I've got it hooked up to Snaggletooth and to my Blue Gladiator. I have it on the Capper 2, but it's not here. 
So here's the setup on Snaggletooth here. I'm running the mini receiver here. This is the R4 FGM receiver there. Fits so well right on the slider of Snaggletooth here. So it just makes for a really clean build. Inside the Gladiator, I'm running the eight channel receiver, but I want to demonstrate some of the best features that I've found on this so far. So it's hooked up to Snaggle right now. If you're familiar with that ROP motor that I have in there, that's a real high KV, really jumpy motor. So one of the things that I found out in the transmitter here, let me show you. Go into my settings here. If I go to my throttle curve, you can adjust the throttle curve on the fly. So this is one of the things that I've done. Just can tune it down here with these buttons. So if I want to slow it way down, I can just spread that curve out. flatten it really out and now watch I can get snaggle to slow crawl really well and you got your real-time telemetry right there if you can see the screen it's that little red bar going across there goes snaggle it's just creeping along right now very slow and controlled just really goes a long way to smooth out the throttle curve and I did the same thing on the Gladiator with the brushless system in that and made an excellent slow crawl on both of these things. So here's another feature that I was really excited about. So I got my winch hooked up to my transmitter here. So how I did this was just plugged it into channel 6. You can see channel 6 occupied. I hooked it up to the DT3 switch which is right here on the steering knob. And then using the customization here, you can change the increments of this button. So at two here means that every time you click the button, it moves two degrees or two numbers. Upping that to 100 makes it a full on and off switch. So we're going to demonstrate the winch functionality here with the transmitter as I got it set up right now. So there it goes. And to stop it, I'm going to wind it back in. So that was just a super cool feature that I was really excited to find. But we're going to go hit the trails now. We're going to have some fun with these things. I'll get back to you guys in a minute on the bench. So now that we've gone over the firmware update, some of the new features, some of my favorite features, let's talk about my impressions of the transmitter after having it for a few weeks and putting some significant time on it. So I still very much adore this transmitter. I still feel like an elderly man kind of working my way through a smartphone for the first time. I know there is just so much that I'm not utilizing on this thing. There's five or six features that I really stick to and that serve my needs and that give me the best driving experience. But with that said, I do still feel like it's a very user-friendly transmitter. Although I do stay within my small realm of familiarity, it's easy to navigate, easy to understand, and the functions that I do use are very practical. From a fit and finish standpoint, this thing's held up great. I've dropped it down rock faces. It's been in mud, water, rain. I throw it in my bag in the back of the Jeep. It's held up really well and it's got next to no cosmetic blemishes on it. I am utilizing the screen protector. I've had that on there the whole time, but the transmitter itself is only very slightly rashed up and it's had no issues. Some of the small challenges that I've run into with this thing is navigating the touch screen. I find that I fat finger it a lot and I end up pushing menu buttons and things like that inadvertently. That could be because of the screen protector on it and the conditions that I'm in. Very small nitpicky thing, probably user error. My biggest complaint is the battery life on this. So I utilize the LiPo battery in this for the most part. That's my kind of my go-to. The battery life on this is rated for seven hours with the LiPo battery that it comes with. I am convinced that I get a lot less than that. Maybe I don't, maybe time just flies because I'm engrossed in the hobby, but I feel like it's a lot less than that. And I have found myself out on the trails with the transmitter dead and or dying. So I've gotten in the habit of carrying with me in my bag the optional battery pack with the eight AAAs that needed to run it. So I just kind of keep this as a backup and I'll likely get another LiPo or two to run in there. 
but overall still very impressed with the RC8X and I really dig this transmitter. For what I do, it's certainly overkill, but I've really enjoyed kind of exploring the features that it has and implementing them incrementally as I find ones that are practical for my needs. The RC8X is available on Amazon for $320. I'll put a link down in the description below for the transmitter itself and also a link for the upgraded R8FG receivers. But let me know down below what do you think of the RC8X and if you've got any tricks or cool features that you've discovered on this thing, let us know in the comments so we can check them all out too. As always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll see you in the next video.